So we're doing constructions, constructing parallel lines. Constructions involve only two tools. They involve a compass and a straight edge. I'm using my protractor here as a straight edge. I won't be using any of the markings on it, just the straight component. I'd like to first make sure we know how to copy an angle. This is a skill we did before, but we're gonna do it again. In order to copy an angle, we have to, of course, start with an angle. An angle is two rays with a common end point. Everybody, please draw yourselves an angle. And you might remember when we did constructions before, we talked about it was helpful to have something underneath your paper, right? Like a book or a binder or a stack of paper. If you have nothing else, use the two page worksheet I gave you. But having something under there where the needle can stick in is going to make your job easier. Now, if we want to copy this angle and produce it down here, it's going to have two rays. And they're going to have a common endpoint. I suggest we start with a ray. We don't know anything about this ray except that it's one of the two. Now, I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to take the sharp point, the needle, and put it in the vertex of my first angle stick it into the paper stack I've got and make an arc. Exactly how wide this is doesn't matter at this point. As long as you can see it intersecting both of the rays, you're good. When you finish that one, pick up your compass, do not change its size and move it down to the end point of your ray and make another arc of the exact same size. There, down to here. Now, we're gonna take our compass and I'm gonna stick the needle right here in the yellow. And I'm gonna measure how far it is to this spot that's circled in pink. Needles in the yellow. And I use the wheel to adjust my compass and find out where that arc meets the ray. And I'll make a little arc there to show that I copied that. Once that measurement's fixed, I'll pick up my compass and put the, without changing it, put the needle on the si similar yellow spot here, it's corresponding, and I'll make another arc. What that tells me is that if I connect my original vertex to that pink point I just made, that will be the corresponding ray to my copied angle. These two angles are now congruent. So now we're gonna use that same skill to create parallel lines. It's from congruent corresponding angles. Parallel lines from congruent corresponding angles. You remember this from last class, we talked about the converse of our parallel angle theorems. And we said that if two lines are cut by a transversal, forming congruent corresponding angles, then those lines will be parallel. So I'll start with one line. And now I'm gonna draw a transversal. And exactly what angle it's at doesn't matter. But I want it to cross over this line and the future home of my parallel line. We need to identify where we're gonna create our parallel line. I'm gonna make a dot right down here and say that's where my parallel line's going through.
And our goal here is going to be to copy this little angle up here and paste it right here. And by doing that, we'll be able to see what the line has to be in order to make congruent corresponding angles. So we start the same way. Doesn't matter what your compass is set at, as long as when you put your needle on this point of intersection, you can go over both rays. You have to hit both sides of your angle. And again, if it's slipping around and not sticking in well, get some paper underneath this. Once you've made that arc, pick up your compass and move the needle down to your dot. And just like before, we're going to measure from this yellow dot to wherever the arc meets this line, and we'll copy that down to this yellow dot to find where this arc is supposed to meet the parallel line. So I put my needle on the yellow dot, and I adjust my compass to find the spot that goes right through that. I'm using the wheel to adjust my compass and get it to be just the right size. And I make a mark to show that's where I take it from. And I pick up my compass, move it down to the other arc's yellow dot, and again, make an arc. So this distance is the same as this distance. And if I've done it carefully, what I produce here is a point of intersection. And if I connect it with my original dot, that should give me a line that is parallel because these angles are corresponding and congruent. Yeah. In your compass, bring it up here. The rest of you, would you please finish this one and then do a number three, a copy of the exact same thing. Okay, let's flip to side two. We're only going to use two of these back ones. I know some of you have made more practice, and that's fine. So now we're doing perpendicular through a point off the line. You might remember when we did this before that we were able to construct a perpendicular bisector and create a segment that cuts it in half and makes it perpendicular. We're going to do something slightly different here because we want to go through this point that's not on the line. So we want it to be perpendicular, but through this point. So step one is, I need to establish two points on this line that are the right distance apart so that this little point below it is below the midpoint. So I stick my needle in this point and I make an arc that crosses over this line in two places. It doesn't matter where, as long as it crosses over in two places. Now, I'm going to treat these as my starting points. I want to make a perpendicular bisector between those two points. So I put my needle on one of them and I adjust my compass to be any size more than halfway. And then I pick it up and make that same arc from the other side. This football shape is going to be exactly between the middle of those two. 
And if I connect the endpoints, I end up with a line that is perpendicular through that point. Okay, last one. So this is parallel via perpendicular to perpendicular. In order to make a line that's perpendicular to this line, I need to go some distance here. I'm gonna go more than halfway and make an arc. And if I carry that distance back over to here and do the same thing, I'm gonna produce not only perpendicular, but also through the midpoint. If instead I had adjusted this to be bigger or smaller, I'd still make kind of a lopsided football it would still be perpendicular, it just wouldn't go through that center point. So I know that that is perpendicular. Now, if I want to create another perpendicular line down here, I'm going to pick some point. And it's very similar to what we did here. I just need to make it go through this point. So I'm gonna make a little arc just to find myself two points that are the same side of each to either side. One on this side, one on this side, same size. Now, if I make a perpendicular bisector, meaning more than halfway from the bottom part and from the top part, I make another football that will be my perpendicular to perpendicular, which means these two lines end up being parallel. 